in programming, paradigm refers to a fundamental way of looking at problems and an underlying style in how you solve those problems. In practice, the most commonly used paradigm is imperative programming. Imperative programming is best understood in contrast to its near-opposite paradigm, functional programming. In both imperative and functional programming, your code is made of the same stuff that we've seen already. It's made up of functions, and those functions consist of expressions, variables, and some kind of control flow, branching. The key difference, though, is that in the functional style, you're not supposed to modify state. It's called functional programming, not because it has a monopoly on functions, imperative programming has functions too, it's just that functions in the functional paradigm are meant to conform to functions in the pure mathematical sense. In mathematics, a function takes input values and it returns an output value, and it is guaranteed that every time you invoke the function with the same input values, it should always return the same output values. It shouldn't be affected, say, by any global variables. Furthermore, aside from returning a new value, the function shouldn't affect anything outside of itself. It shouldn't cause any side effects. So, for example, if a mutable kind of object, like a list in pigeon, is passed to a function, well, if we're programming in the functional paradigm, we're not supposed to mutate that list. That would be a side effect, because it would mean that the function has changed something outside of itself. It would also be a side effect if a function displayed text on a screen, or say wrote something to a file. So in fact, to be purely functional, your functions can't do any input-output work. Now, the obvious problem here is that a function which doesn't do any output at all is totally useless. You can have a brilliant program which computes the meaning of life, but if the meaning of life is not displayed on the screen, or written to a file, or sent across the network, or just in some way transmitted to the world outside of the program, then it doesn't matter that we've computed the secret of life. The secret will sit there in the program memory, and when the program terminates, it'll just disappear. So, the reality of programming in the functional style is that some kind of allowance must be made so that input-output work can be done. There has to be some kind of hole in the functional purity. So a more accurate way to characterize functional programming is that it's the paradigm in which, in which you attempt to minimize any kind of state change, and you try and contain it to just a small subsection of your code. This can be a tricky thing to do if you're not especially comfortable with the functional style of programming. But the argument is made by advocates of functional programming that the more you minimize the amount of state change in your code, the better your code is going to be. A third paradigm, called object-oriented programming, is a style in which the emphasis is on data rather than action. Whereas in normal imperative and functional programming, we think of code as a set of functions, in object-oriented programming, we think of our code as a set of data types, and those data types have defined behaviors associated with them. In the end, those behaviors are really just functions by another name. They're typically called methods in object-oriented programming. But there still is an inverted emphasis. There's an emphasis on data over action. Object-oriented programming isn't really a separate paradigm. It actually complements either the imperative style or the functional style. So you can program in an imperative object-oriented style, or you can program in a functional object-oriented style. In practice, the imperative style is far more popular, and I would say today that the majority of new code written is written in an imperative object-oriented style.